Hello and welcome to my floss tube channel. I'm Jean Farish and I am so glad that you're here with me today. On Christmas Day, I hosted my first Zoom gathering. I sent the invitations out by way of the JFN SAL group on Facebook, as well as my own page and the Jean Farish Needleworks page. We had a small but lively gathering of um, like-minded stitchers and I decided to edit that session and bring you the highlights today. Stitchers from all parts of the United States joined us. We had people from New England, as well as Florida, and the Midwest, and the Southwest, and California. So it was a um, very interesting group of people, and they had lots of questions and comments. And we just enjoyed um, just the casual conversation that, that Stitchers enjoy so much when they, when they get together. Hello there, welcome. Okay, so unmute, unmute yourself so we can hear you. Merry Christmas. I'm gonna mute myself because my husband and my son are in the background and uh, so I don't want all their noise. <laughs> well, that's okay. That's, that's happy noise. It so, is happy noise. <laughs> let me introduce my, my daughter Elizabeth to you. Um, Hi, Elizabeth. Hi. She's helping me out here since she's got a lot more experience with Zoom than I do. But, um, okay. We're we're gonna we're gonna get used to this because this is a great way to communicate. Absolutely, absolutely. I um, I don't know what I would do without Zoom because yeah. it's how I conduct book club and I play mahjong and all sorts oh, of well, things on great. Zoom. So. That's great. Mm -hmm. Your tree is lovely. Oh, thank you. That's my grandchildren's contribution to the uh, uh, garland. <laughs> That's that is. Uh, <laughs> I remember doing that myself in grade school. Mm -hmm. Good mm -hmm. to know that people are still doing that. <laughs> Absolutely. Where do you live, Jean? I'm in what we call the Piedmont area of North Carolina. So oh, okay. kind of in the middle of the state, kind of uh -huh. right when the hills began to lead it into the mountains. So um, kind of kind of halfway between north and south border and east and west border. So it's um it's okay. lovely here. But um no, I no. got a great Christmas present this morning from my son, and that's a gift card to uh, 123stitch.com. <laughs> you, you, you raised him right. That's good. <laughs> so let's see. And who else has joined us? Gail. Where's Gail? Hey, Gail. Tell us where you're from. Wait, you have to unmute, unmute yourself for a moment. Sorry about that. I am from Fargo, North Dakota. Oh, wow. So we've got Florida, we've got Los Angeles, we've got Fargo, North Carolina. So already we're north, south, east, and west. This is great. So, and Merry Christmas and welcome. Thank you, same to you guys. Let's see, and we also have Sherry. Wait, Sherry, we already talked to. Gail, I don't think we've talked to Gail yet. We just did. Oh, that was Chris. Me. Sorry, okay. Now, is it Chris or Kurz? How, how are we saying that name? K -I -R -S. Kierce. That's you. Like, like ear. Kierce. Kierce. Sorry. Yeah. Great. Welcome, Kierce. I, thank and, you. I'm, I'm near Cleveland, Ohio. Okay. So. So, almost smack dab in the middle of the country. So. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Um. I heard you guys saying you don't have too many local needle workshops. We're kind of lucky. We have about, um, well, I have two that are about 10 minutes from each other. They're about an hour from me. Well, I know. Of they happen to be keepsakes. Now, now, Ohio is where they do that, um, that annual event. Yeah. That involves like about five shops, five or six shops. I think it's closer to 14. Oh my goodness. But it's um, tour to stitch. Court of Stitch, yeah. That, right. You know, that is such a good example of shops cooperating with each other mm -hmm. to the benefit of everybody. Yeah. And, um, you know, you don't, you know, another shop doesn't have to be a competitor. Mm -hmm. um, they can right. be an ally. And right. So, so that's and, great. Well, all right. We are now all officially jealous of you. Yeah. <laughs> I, I have with me sometimes. I have zero. Yeah. Mm. Now, of course, you used to have um, Nordic Needle. Nordic Needle. Yeah, it was, was a like great shop. Ultimate shops. 
Yeah. Yeah. And that, and that's, that's almost worse than not having one to go from having a great shop to not having mm -hmm. any. Yep. Karis, do you have, are you close to keepsakes? No, they're in Cincinnati. They're about, oh, okay. I actually live in Ashtabula. And so like if you drew a diagonal line across Ohio from the Northeast to the Southwest, yeah, they're about five, six hours from me. Oh, okay. Um, that's funny. Astabula. We have a lake, Astabula. It's about an hour from where I live. <laughs> really? Yeah. <Wow. laughs> Usually when I say Astabula, people say, God bless you. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard that before. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, did any, anybody else get stitchy presents um, this Christmas? Only from myself. <laughs> Those are the best kind sometimes. Okay. Exactly what I wanted. <laughs> Let's see. Now, whoever just jumped in there, that is that Harriet. 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 Okay. All right, Harriet. And where are you? Where are you talking to us from? East Tennessee. All right. Yeah, I hear a little bit of that in your in your accent. Just a little bit. <laughs> just a little bit. We got about three four inches of snow. I bet First you white Christmas in uh, years. Oh wow! Well, we we had lots of rain yesterday, and if it had been cold, we probably would have had about a foot of of snow. But oh yeah, we, it, all we got was rain and wind, and we we're not seeing you, and that's that's okay if you don't if you don't want us to see you. But. Well, and I you know I'm about as techno as about nobody. <laughs> Well, if we can help you out in any way, let us know because I, I am fumbling in the dark myself. I had to, um, Elizabeth wave, wave, this is my daughter Elizabeth and um, she and I share a home and um, she is my right hand. And oh, there I am. There you go. All right. <laughs> um, yeah, so she, I had to call, she's, she's upstairs on, on her laptop and I'm downstairs in the living room. And I said, you know, I, twice I've had to call her down there. Elizabeth, come down here to help me. <laughs> So yeah, it's, it's great. Great to have somebody so close. <laughs> yes, yes. So thanks, Elizabeth. <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah. So she's um she's getting um more and more involved with with what I'm doing with cutting fabric and helping put together kits and all that kind of stuff. Now is she the daughter that stitches also? Well, actually, they 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 both stitch, but um, Elizabeth is the one who stitched the the Jane Hattersley sampler. Oh, very nice work. Very nice work. Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, she, she's um, very diligent about it and uh, has really, really stuck with it. This is Kim from New Hampshire. Oh, hey, Kim from New Hampshire. We're so glad that you're with us. Yeah, we had 22 inches of snow and then the rain took it. I think we're down to like three or four. Oh, well, hopefully yeah. it doesn't turn to ice. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, you guys really got hit big last week. Yeah. Almost. It reminds us when we first moved in the house in 78. You know, with, but anyways, I, I'm just going to say hi and bye. We got to go down and see my mom. Uh, okay. Three well, and, so, so glad that you, that you checked in with us. So yeah. um, one, once I get used to this whole process, I, I hope to do this more often. And, okay. Because um, I think that's a great way to visit with each other and just you know you know e even even um without covid it is nice to have this technology as far as bringing us together from you know we've got los angeles we've got north dakota we've got tennessee we've got florida um new hampshire so you know at this point if if we had a map going we would have you know lights <laughs> going on all, all over the place and yeah. you know that that's that's the best we can do right now, but I, I think it's going to be an effective way to, to, to get together even once the world opens up again. Yeah, no, I appreciate you doing this, and I love, I, I just started the uh, Here Comes Christmas a couple weeks ago, and okay, I'm, I'm going to do both of them, so. Okay, good. good. Yeah. You help me find Cosmos. <laughs> so. Oh, good. Yeah, and you know, and like right now, the frankly, the best place to, to find them in, in general are in quilt stores. Um, the quilt shops are carrying it, and and not not cross stitch shops. Yeah, um, so, that's interesting. Yeah, but at any rate, well, enjoy your visit with your with your mom, 
And okay. um, thanks for, for joining us for, for even a short time. All right, thank you so much. So at any rate, so has anybody, I have not, I have literally not started. I mean, here's, here's, here's my fabric with my needle <laughs> where I'm going to start. This, this time I'm gonna start in the top center. Um, I don't even have fabric yet. <laughs> yeah. Well, I did. Mine's mine's downstairs on the ottoman. I didn't bring it up with me. Well, I was I was. Um, shall I, I can I can certainly show them. Yeah. Uh, Elizabeth uh, jumped the gun, and um, wait wait till you see what she has done. Hold on a second. An overachiever, right, Elizabeth? <laughs> yeah. Well. There hasn't been much else for me to do, so. <laughs> well, she finished. She finished. Jane. Oh my gosh! She finished Jane, and then and then she went into withdrawal, as as we all do when we finish a project. You have to have something else. Oh, oh beautiful. my gosh! So she has. You know, it's showing up backwards, isn't it? No, no, it's showing it's forwards. So she has almost all of it done. So wow. Elizabeth, Very nice. Are you going to put Beautiful. the date in, in the bottom, Elizabeth? I don't know. Well, you've got time to decide. Okay. Uh, at any rate, and of course, you know, the big thing this time was I made, left enough room for anybody's initials. At least I, I, I didn't measure it, but I'm hoping that even if somebody has WWS for their initials, that there's. <laughs> well, I kind of jumped the gun too because I oh. started. <laughs> Now, I, I now always start, but I consider a very brave stitcher when the two, when you, oh, your beginning God. and your end came together. Well, you know, when I got like hat, when I got over here, I just went and made sure that they met up mm -hmm. so that I didn't worry quite so much. And then I did the first one. And so by the time I got, you know, like after I did this first quarter, I had the pattern down. Okay. You know your pattern because it's just repetitive all the way around. I mean, I I had it down. <laughs> okay. Wow. See, it is and it isn't. Okay. Well, but it is. It's just a repeat. No. No. Some of it's different. There's one. There's one place where it's different, and it's it broke my heart when I realized it. And uh, Elizabeth can tell you, I really thought about going back to the beginning and fixing it. But well, at the okay at the top, it's not the it's not it's not that first stretch, and then after that you've got two four you've got a, a group of six, yeah, and a group of four, yeah, and then a group of three, right? And then, you, and then you start with groups of two, and you've got one two three four groups of two, right? Okay, now if you go down to the side, if you go down here. Oh right, yeah, there are groups of five then. Then, yeah, then the, the groups of two, there's one, two, three, four, five groups of two. And yeah. so four groups of two. Yeah. That, that's, that's my that's mistake that I have to live with. Right? It's driving me nuts, but I will fix it in the 2021. A mathematical yeah. mistake that I made. Right. That, like but mine met up, and so I'm happy with it. Yeah. So, so I mean, when I realized it, I started to redesign it and I realized what it was going to take to fix that. And I thought, I, 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 I can't go there. It's like starting all over again. Right. So I would leave it. I like it. Oh yeah. I'm leaving it up. <laughs> it's, 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 it's done and done and dusted as they say. Oh, don't change it for the next one. Cause I got the pattern down now. <laughs> Well, probably between now and 2021, you you may you you may be able to reset your. Well, your, maybe. <laughs> Let's see. Somebody else has come in. Um, is it Darlene? Yeah. Saying your name right. You are. Okay. Um. So welcome. Where Where are you from? I'm from Clearfield, Utah. With this With this first thing, I don't know how much stitching I'm actually going to be able to do. I. I can, um, you know, when, when you when you sit with another sister, do you have conversations that go along with, yeah, and then the other day I went to the grocery store, four, five, six, seven, and I bumped into, you like, like, you know, in the middle of a sentence, you'll start counting. Um, and only another cross stitcher gets that. Because like I said, I mean, this isn't a class, this is just a casual get together. So it's not like, um, yeah, at any rate. 
So we were talking about getting stitchy type uh, Christmas gifts. I know Elizabeth got something from her in her stocking that was stitching. Yes, I got some thread drops in my stocking. Yeah, and a sewing kit and a tin. Yep, it's a pretty little tin. Can never mm -hmm. have too many tins. No. So, at any rate, um, I got a gift card to my local shop, and I got. Tanya Berlin's White Work Color book. Oh, Trish Burr. Yeah. Her White Work. Mm -hmm. wow. She does she does a lot of um surface embroidery type white work, doesn't yeah. she? Yeah. And this is with color, which I've never I've never done white work. Let oh. alone with color. Okay. The only the only work I, I've done a very, very little bit of hard on her. Very little. Um Mainly what I've been interested in has been pulled and drawn thread, as, as many of you probably know. But, um, you know, I haven't done the, the surface embroidery, but Trish Burr is, man, she is so talented, um, very creative. So anybody else get stitchy things for Christmas? Whether, even if you gave it to yourself, that still counts. <laughs> I did, I ordered a new pattern. No, I just got to find because I was going to share it. Yeah, it was from another site, <laughs> but okay. I've got a lovely love affair going on with roosters. <laughs> ah, oh, he's clever. I just love him. So I'm going to, and he's a quick stitch. Yeah, he's only 72 by 72. Yeah. But I, I just had to get him when I found him. Well, he's got so much personality. I can see why you were attracted to that one. Yeah. <laughs> just like when I saw yours be home for Christmas and then this one, it's like, oh, of course Jean would come out with one to match it. Now I got to do that one. <laughs> yeah. Well, actually, when I did the first one, which was actually 1998, my idea was to do one every year. Well, it only took me 22 years to... <laughs> Better late than never. One. <laughs> but you know that, and that just shows you really just how timeless samplers are. I mean, you know, you, you can't really tell that I designed it in 1998. So, at any rate, but it's um, it's it's fun. And actually, what I what I've been working on this week is Roxy. Um, she's 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 coming along. She's a bit of a challenge right now, but. I think I figured out um, a solution to my design quandary, and um, now I can move ahead. So I can't wait for Roxy. Um, she's. Um, I'll show you what I have done so far. I mean, right now I'm just testing colors. So that's all. That's all. I, and I'm just doing this. This is just, you know, obviously not as big as the sampler because the kits I think are twenty. I'm cutting the fabric 20 by 24. So this is just a little tiny piece, but this is what I do to work out the colors before, um, you know, because the, I mean, two, two things, you know, one is that the software colors are not anywhere near what the actual colors are. Uh, and then the difference between when you stitch a line um, like the vine in a color and looking at the color on the skein, the skein is bulkier. I mean, you know, the colors are, I don't know, I shouldn't say more in your face, but just, you know, there's more of it. So it's really hard to judge how they're gonna re relate to each other. Um, and so that's what I'm struggling with right now. I, I know what color families I wanna use. Um, and also it's kind of like sometimes I've got a medium, a light and a dark, and I, I've got the light, color in that family is exactly what I want. And the dark is exactly what I want, but the middle color doesn't exist. <laughs> you know, it's like, it's not there. Um, and so that's, that's kind of frustrating sometimes, but you know, it's, it's part of the process. So I, I do, a, I do a lot of stitching and ripping out when I'm, when I'm at, at this stage. So I, um, I, I, I need to finalize my colors so that um, on Monday I can, make the final um floss order 
So um, we already have the linen and Elizabeth is gonna be cutting that so we can get the, the kits. The, cutting the fabric takes the biggest hunk of time. Um, it's, we cut it right on the lines, you know, so there's. Can you tell me what Roxy is? Cause I'm afraid I don't know what that is. Okay. Well, Roxana Corson is an antique sampler that I did. Um, it belonged to a museum and uh, I do remember now. <laughs> so when when I was kind of re, um, reintroducing it, um, somebody one day very nicely said, you know, I, I, I like the sampler, but the colors just don't do anything for me. So I thought, you know, that's, that's not an uncommon comment. And it, it is truly, especially when you're dealing with an antique, they didn't have 400 or 500 colors to choose from. You know, the, these are threads that were probably naturally dyed. Um, although, um, you know, DMC goes back to the 1700s. So, I mean, they could have used DMC floss. Um, but anyway, but they still didn't have the access to the, to the colors that we have. So I got to thinking, well, what if, you know, if instead of calling it Roxana, if I called it Roxy, if Roxy was here, what colors would she pick? And I just went wild with it, you know, just really brightening it up, but basically taking the same um, design motifs, rearranging them a little bit because I thought, well, as long as I'm doing this, I think I'm going to do it so the finished design will fit in a standard 16 by 20 frame. So people whose budget does not in include custom framing will have a nice frame option to be able to use um, an off the shelf um, frame. So those two things together led me to kind of just revamping it. And so um, I'm offering people, people are already signing up for it now, either to get the complete kit from me um, which will be the linen and the Cosmo floss and of course the chart. And I'm also going to do um, it uh, right now. I'm estimating six video um, instructional videos to go with it because it's going to have stitches like the rice stitch and um, long arm cross stitch and herringbone and, and you know, a couple of other uh, stitches. So I'll, I'll do that with it. So people can either get just the chart and video or they can get the complete kit, which will also include the videos. And then once we get through this, um, it's so basically it's a mystery stitch along. So, you know, you'll see the colors and you'll see the first bit of it and have a general idea of, of what's coming. And then once a month, I will, um, you know, do the next part. And I'm, I'm estimating that it will launch the beginning of March. Now, the big, the big thing I, that's completely out of my control is this whole thing of mail not only from me to my customers, but from my suppliers to me. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, that's the part that, you know, you just, you can't estimate. I mean, I, I sent a priority mail envelope from my home 25 miles from here and it took two weeks to get there. You know, so I mailed it December 1st and I think she got it the 15th or 16th. So um, it's, it's just, it's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. Yeah, so that, that's what Roxy's all about. So just taking that classic uh, antique sampler and kind of making it contemporary. So that's what that is. Long answer to your short question. I, you know, I, I do that. I like to get started and I just spiral on, on and on and on and on. That's okay. I have another question, um, unless somebody else has one. I'm curious what make something a sampler um that, why are things called samplers okay. that's a really good question and I, you know i i am not a sampler expert i'm not um, i'm not a textile expert i mean there are certainly people who know far more about samplers than i do but to me a sampler has um I, i'm going to say three components um an alphabet a quote and a border and to me, if it has those three things, it's a sampler. Um, a lot of people think that a sampler means it's a sampling of stitches, but it can be a sampler and be nothing but cross stitch. So I, I would, um, you know, again, if, and if anybody who's already in the audience 
you know, has the credentials, you know, jump in and, you know, tell us what, tell me what's what, but that, that's, that's my impression of it. Um, when I, you know, when I look at, when I have visited museums like the Whitman sampler collection at the, and, and Philadelphia and, um, here our, our, our local museum, Museum of Early Southern Decorative Arts has an incredible uh, collection of samplers that are all done, um, were all created by girls when they lived in the Southeast. Um, actually, I shouldn't say the Southeast because it doesn't include Florida. But at any rate, it's a very specific geographic area um, that, that the museum focuses on. And so I, I would say that what I just described would be true of the samplers that I've seen in those two places. Plus, um, Michigan, um, golly, what museum is, is it the Henry Ford Museum maybe? Has a big collection of samplers, if anybody knows that. I've been enjoying your floss tubes very much. Well, good, I, I appreciate that. And it's good to see you, um, it's been a while. It has been. <laughs> yeah, too, too long, um, so. I'm, I'm glad that you have joined us. I um, just came across it. I hadn't had a chance to, so I don't have anything in hand as we're speaking, but it's, it is good to just hear other voices talk about stitching, so. Yeah, and, and you're Indiana, no? Southern Illinois. Southern Illinois, close, but no The floss tube I was listening to yesterday, you mentioned the Arcola. Oh yeah, um, from Gardens. And I used to go to those. I lived fairly close to those and yeah. they were very nice. They were really low key and fun to go to. Yep. Yep. Well, Catherine and Elizabeth were, Elizabeth, do you remember, you were probably about eight years old when we went? Maybe, maybe 10? I think seven or eight because the first time we went, I'm pretty sure we still lived in New Jersey. So yes. I would have been seven. Yeah. Yeah. That's seven or eight. Those of you who have joined me after I introduced it, this is my daughter, Elizabeth. Um, so, and so she and Catherine, they, man, they, they just, you know, what was nice was somebody else who was involved in it had a daughter who was similar to their age. And the three of them just, I mean, they just, when I said that they, they could just run wild, I don't really mean that they were wild, wild, but <laughs> I could just, I didn't have to worry about them all day long, you know, um, and they just, you know, just enjoyed the, the, that just, like you say, that whole low key, um, you know, it was, it was just a special place. Um, I probably should actually start stitching. I don't know. I don't know if I can walk and talk and stitch all at the same time. I find that it's really difficult for me to do anything when I'm stitching besides stitching. Um, the uh, border on the hearts come home at Christmas, took yeah. me four attempts yeah. to complete it <laughs> because yeah. I really have to concentrate and um uh and the vine seemed to be easier for me the vine um I I like you said got into that rhythm but uh doing the um the border required all my concentration and I usually sit with the tv on and I and I try to peek through my magnifying glasses to see what's going on on the TV. And my husband will say, did you see that? Did you see that? I'll say, no. <laughs> so we back it up. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I do really have to concentrate when I'm doing my needle work. Yeah, I, I find that I can watch TV if I'm watching something that either I don't care about, which is rare. I mean, why bother? Um, or something that there's no plot like the British baking show. I, I can, that can be on while I'm stitching and you know, the stitching is my, um, is my main focus. But the thing that I enjoy the most is watching something for the second time. So like, you know, I've watched Outlander, I think from the beginning to end three different times. And I, I can watch that, I can watch that and still be concentrating on my stitching. So I'm hard, um, I'm hard hearing, so I use the captions when I'm watching TV, and I find that that actually helps me to stitch and watch TV, because if I miss a few words or if I miss something, the captions are delayed like two or three seconds compared yeah. to what people are saying, or they're two or three seconds ahead, and yeah. so it gives me like twice as long to see the show as it does watching it. Yeah. 
I, I, I use the captions routinely, but you're right, especially when you're stitching it, it matters. See, Darlene posted a question here. She said, how did, how did you get started with doing the samplers? Uh, do you mean just samplers in general? No, you're um, like Roxana, those type of samplers. Well, actually, I guess I would say the whole thing started really with Janet Irving, which um, was my first published design, the Janet Irving sampler. And Janet Irving is the great, great, great grandmother of my daughters, Catherine and Elizabeth. So fortunately, women in the Farish family held, and, and I'm going to give women credit for it. I don't, you know, the guys may have had something to do with it, but I, I kind of doubt it. But fortunately, it survived being handed down through all these generations. And Janet um, stitched the sampler um, when she was seven years old. Um, and later when she was, I want to say maybe actually pretty old for the time in her early twenties, she married, uh, George Farish in Scotland. That's, they both lived within miles of each other in two different parishes, uh, very close to the border between Scotland and, and England. And they, um, once their son James was born, I think he was only a year old, they immigrated to America. Um, and lived in the southern part of New Jersey, which is where Elizabeth was born. And um, so Janet Sam, I mean, when I think about her packing this trunk to make this ocean voyage with her husband and young son, knowing that they were, you know, coming to a whole new life and probably would never get a chance to go back home again, one of the things she packed with her was, was her sampler. And in all those years, it it survived and it, it came to me. And so when I was starting Jean Ferris Needleworks, I thought, well, let me just start with a sampler. So that, that was it. I mean, it's not like, again, I'm, I'm not a sampler expert. In fact, I can sell, tell some pretty embarrassing stories about mistakes I made with, with that first sampler. Um, things I learned a lot about, about samplers in general and stitching that I was able to, to put to use. So that, that was Janet. And then um, there was a small historic society museum in Cape May Courthouse, New Jersey. And um, just visiting there and talking to the curators and whatnot, they had um, the Roxana Corson sampler. So um, they gave me permission to, um, to reproduce that one. Um, and then I bought a small one, uh, Marianne Backhouse, um, and reproduce that one. That's that's a very very small sampler. So um, so I've actually done four antique reproductions altogether. So I'm certainly not as prolific with it as as many other designers are. You have you have Katie Bemis also. That's right, and Katie Bemis is the fourth one. So um, that's that's it for me for right now until. First of the year is when Jane Hattersley will join the group of girls. And then um, I have another one that I bought, not this past summer, but the summer before at auction um, that I'm excited about, but somewhat intimidated by because it's incredibly, incredibly fine. Um, let me see if I can, if I can find a quick um, image of it. I'll, I'll share it with you. I don't know whether or not I've got it. Right, can you see her now? Oh, yeah. yeah. So this is Emily Sarah Amelia Vanderpan, um, eight years old. And, and like Elizabeth said, this is incredibly, incredibly fine, the sam um, sampler. And the thing that I find amazing is how obsessed she was with numbers. I mean, so I don't know anything about, um, about Emily Sarah Amelia yet. But um, I, I will be learning what I can about her. But so this is one. This this will be the one that I will do after we get um, Jane launched. So yeah. When you do a reproduction, mm -hmm. do you just do you use a great deal of magnification and graph paper? I mean, you you don't take anything apart, do you? No. Well. No, um, I haven't so far. Of course, the museum one was, you know, out of my control. Um, the Janet Irving one, um, 
I w is in very, very bad shape and I knew it was pretty fragile. I just um, did an interesting Zoom um, meeting with a sampler guild uh, in the Atlanta area um, beginning of this month and in preparation for that. And they wanted to talk about Janet specifically. So, and I was ready to take it to the framer to have it reframed anyway. And I, I wanted to kind of remount it. But what I discovered is that I'm pretty sure it's, it's glued to a piece of cardboard. Ooh. Yeah. Uh, so I just, I mean, you know, maybe I'll look into the expense of what, what it would take to take it to a textile conser conservationist person and um, see what they think could be done with it. But it's it's way beyond my scope of what I what I would tackle. Um, so I mean, you people who when you can take it apart, the one of the things that you can do is by turning it over very often, you get a different sense of the colors because they haven't been exposed to sunlight, etc. And so you very often will hear people talk about how much brighter the colors are when they when they take it apart. So that's Janet, and, and I haven't taken it. I haven't seen the back of any of them. Now I'm, I might for for Jane. Jane, interestingly, whoever uh, kept it, protected it, took care of it. Um, they took s some sort of, and I don't know whether it's cardboard or tack board because none of it's visible, but they took a piece of what I'm assuming is muslin and wrapped it around it and it's tight little tiny stitches on the back across and then they folded the edges in and tiny little stitches down both sides and then they sewed the sampler to that piece of fabric and in both cases of Janet and Jane in both cases somebody at some point whether it was them or someone else cut it cut the linen right up to the edge of the stitching and I and I don't I, and we're not talking about non stitch where it's done so that it's not going to come unraveled. It is cross stitch right up to the edge and it's cut right there. So this is what Jane looks like on the back. So um, just very very primitive, tiny little stitches. And so this you can see where it's cut. This is, this is the corner of Jane, um, and you can see where it's cut right up to the edge and then sewn. If you look really carefully, you can see these tiny little white stitches. That's where it's sewn to this piece of fabric. So, yeah, so I would, this one I, I do plan on um, taking it off this piece of fabric and um, but I'm, I'm kind of, it's kind of a scary prospect to think about taking it from the original mounting. I, you just kind of have this fear that it's just going to crumble. <laughs> you know, I don't know if that's ever actually happened to anybody, but that's kind of what scares me about it. Um, I just started samplers in the past few little months, but I love it. And I, I think that's going to develop into a real love. Uh, yeah. So, and I'm trying to get over to using linen. So I'm working on a piece of linen on something real simple right now, but. Good. I bought some, so I'm ready to start. But it's, it's if, if you remember when you first started stitching in Laida, did you find yourself like thinking like where every single stitch went and just concentrating on every single stitch? And we do that and then we get so accustomed to it. Then when we switch to linen and we find ourselves concentrating on every single stitch, you forget that that's what you were doing when you were stitching on Aida also. Um, it's just that, you know, there's been a, a gap between when you were the novice and when you start stitching on linen. So you kind of have to remind yourself to give yourself some grace to know that, you know, you, you will get the hang of it. Um, just don't, don't expect to stitch as fast uh, on linen uh, when you first start and just, you know, be patient with yourself. I have really enjoyed your videos. You have taught me so very, very much. Oh, well, good. And 
and I love the water on the sponge thing. I mean, it works every time. Yep. Every time. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, I, I have to say that I find myself sort of cringing when people talk about thread heaven and all these other things that people put on their embroidery floss. And I tell you, an, another person that y'all will really enjoy if you haven't already seen her is Mary Corbett. Um, she has an incredible, she doesn't do floss tube, but she has an incredible website and newsletter. And she really said it best on answering this question about um, things like, like Thread Heaven or any, any of the other brands. She said, you know, if a floss manufacturer felt that they had to improve the quality of their thread to the point where you, the stitcher, could enjoy it and work with it, they would have done that. They're, they're not giving you a half-baked product. They're not giving you a product that you have to then go and buy something else and add it to it. It, the product stands on its own. And so this whole thing of feeling like you have to add something to it, it's just, that's just a myth that I am happy to bust. Um, well, my thought is why buy something when water is free? Yes. And there's more money for right. stitchy stuff. <laughs> and and so, I mean, I, I kind of lucked onto that. I mean, I've been doing that since the early 80s, um, just with, with the water and mainly, it just it just it just straightens it out so that it doesn't knot. I mean, because every time you've got, do any of you do any kind of boating or sailing or anything? No. Okay. Not much in North Dakota. Yeah. <laughs> we do have lakes. Um, yeah, we do. <laughs> that um, you know, one of the worst things that can happen if you're in boating is that your lines get a kink in them, because that's when they snag um, and they can they can cause issues and problems and whatnot. And, and I kind of took that same idea and applied it to floss and said, well, you know, if I start out with my floss being straight, then I'm less likely to get knots and tangles and whatnot. And that's really how I, I locked into it. So at any rate, but that's, I'll get off my soapbox, but you know, especially, and, and I know I, I tend to insult people unknowingly because I mean, some of you might love thread heaven and use it all the time. And here I am telling you, you don't need to. I trained as a surgical tech and some of the suture they use is cotton. Now this was a long time ago, but I remember that in order to straighten the cotton off of the rolls that it comes in, we'd have to put it in water. So when you first said that and I did it, it was like, oh yeah, yeah. that's, <laughs> there it is. There you go. How about yeah. That's interesting, Harriet. That's interesting. And does anyone really know what Thread Heaven does, like on an heirloom piece, like 50 right. or 60 years? I mean, it's yeah. one thing you're making a bookmark for your best friend, but it's different if you're making something. Oh. Jean, do you stitch everything in hand, or do you ever feel, do you ever see a need for frames and okay. snaps I, and whatnot? <laughs> Like everybody else, I started with embroidery hoops and feeling that you, you know, since I'm doing embroidery, I must need to use embroidery hoop. And um, one of the things, the thing that kept me from continuing down that path is I'm stitching along and I've got enough thread to do 10 more stitches and I've got, but I can't go there because my embroidery hoop edges. So mainly, I just like the freedom of not having the restriction of, of a space. You know, obviously if I still had thread in that color and had 10 more stitches to do, yeah, I can pop the embroidery hoop off and move it, but who does that? You know, and of course nowadays what you do is park your thread and, you know, and then come back to it or whatever. But that's, that's mainly what, what I think when I think back to, trying to remember why I stopped using embroidery hoops. That was the main thing. Um, I mean, they're, they're beautiful and people who have wonderful stretcher bars and, and uh, floor frames and whatnot, um, it's, you know, th they are beautiful tools and, you know, well-built and certainly uh, beautiful. I, I'm just too much, well, Barring COVID, I am too much of an on-the-go stitcher. I take my stitching with me to basketball games and soccer games and 
picnics and you know whatever you know car wash just you know any any place i'm going i've got my stitching with me and so i like the portability of it you just make it look so easy though when you're doing it by hand and it the fabric all looks so neat when i'm trying to do it i've got fabric everywhere <laughs> and it's frustrating so i guess it's just what you get used to yeah it is and and i tell you when i did america land that we love um that was the largest piece it's probably the largest piece i've ever done and certainly the largest one i ever did in in hand and it it is you know when you're working kind of in the middle you know and you've got you know 12 inches of fabric on, on either side then yeah, it, it is sort of cumbersome. Um, so that's, you know, that's certainly consideration. So again, I, I don't want to make it sound like, I think that if you use embroidery hoops or stretcher bars or Q snaps, that's all fine. Um, I just, um, you know, like I said, Sue, it's, it's finding what, what works best for you and this is what works best for me. Who's got questions? Well, I, I have one question. We're starting from the top, mm -hmm. three inches down. Yes. Okay. I've yeah. never done a round one. That's why. I do oh, sandbars. Now, now, when we say three inches down, when you cut your fabric, as long as you cut it so you have three inches on all sides, then yes, that's, that's all I did was I just folded my fabric and found mm -hmm. my center and came down three inches, and that's where I'm going to start. Yeah, I got a 20 by 24 piece, oh, so I yeah. think, yeah, I'm fine. Yeah. I've just never done a round one. <laughs> yeah. I, I always do the band yeah. samplers. Now, you know, when I did the the set of videos for When Hearts Come Home at Christmas, I, I, I didn't start right in the middle, but I mainly I started with the house because trying to make that on a, on a novice level, I figured that would be the easiest place to, to start. Um, but yeah, with a round one, I, 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 I'm, I'm planning on starting at the top center. Okay. And then uh, I hadn't stitched in 16 years. Cause I didn't, you see, I discovered these things that I got it in Etsy, but then they have them on Amazon too. They're like oh. rechargeable yeah. little things. Yeah. Two LED lights. You look funky, but I'm going to turn on the lights. So you see how much light they give. Yeah but I can't do it during the call because it's going to blind you guys. Yeah. But you have plenty of lights and it was like 15 bucks on Amazon. Etsy was twice. Great. I know I, I can at least stitch now. I wish I had known about that 16 years ago. Yeah. Because I didn't stitch for 16 years because of my eyesight. Yeah. So, ha and course, having, having a, a very directed light and having the magnification are, are, are key. I mean, for years, I didn't need to wear glasses when I stitched. Now, no, I, mean, I, I can't stitch without my readers. I mean, no. It's, no. for me, it's an age thing. I mean, you get to be- I you know, have readers. I have I'm readers not that much younger. <laughs> yeah. So it's finding, you know, again, just like we said, finding whether you're comfortable stitching in hand or with a magnet, with a embroidery hoop, getting the right magnification and the right amount of light are, are, are really important. Yeah, it's like I explained it to a friend of mine. It's like when you get in a car, you know how to drive, but if it's a new car, you gotta figure out where right. your mirrors go, you know, where everything is, how do you turn on the wipers? How do you, I mean, yep. you, you need to get used to the new car. So I'm not saying I can't do it, but I've never done a circle. <laughs> I've always done bands. You'll be fine, and you know, in, in the stitch along group, just post questions when you've got them. Okay. So, and if, if I'm not online, somebody else will jump in with an with an answer. So. One more question, really quick. What is the deadline for um, letting you know for your March, um, Roxy? Oh, well, I'm gonna. Um, my my big restriction is getting is getting floss and um you know I'm, I'm, i don't i don't have a i don't have a simple answer for you but i um the wholesaler that i get my floss from generally um orders 
um, the floss from Japan like once a month and it's usually about the 15th of the month. So I think what I said was if people let me know by early in January, I forget what date I said, which I realize is coming up like next week, um, that they that they would be in the first batch as far as ordering the floss. Now, once that once their cutoff comes and goes, if there are more orders, then you know I'll, I'll place another order. But it's not the sort of thing where they don't they don't order once a week or once a day from from the factory. They, they do it once a month, and so that's that's my big restriction. The linen, my supplier tells me I'm not going to have a problem getting linen. I mean the the first. 25 or 30 yards that I ordered, I ordered it like a Monday and I had it on Thursday. Um, so that's, that's not, right now that's not an issue. It's the floss that's an issue. That, that and how erratic shipping is, that even once it leaves the factory, you know, there was a time when you could say, well, in, in, in X number of days, I'm gonna have it. And we, we can't say that anymore. Let me so tell you can we buy that. just the, the fabric? and the pattern without the floss or is it the complete kit that we would need to get that's where I, i'm just going to be very selfish and say to make it easy on myself it's either going to be by the chart or the full kit um so that, yeah that's a very selfish answer to your question but i kind of i mean linen's not that hard to come by and if somebody is if somebody wants to stitch it in dmc or variegated you know weeks dye works or whatever if they want to do a conversion then um you know they they certainly can but um you know i'm pretty much a one person operation with the help of my daughter elizabeth so um i just need to keep it streamlined will you have that dmc conversion or would the, that be something we need to the, do the the chart the chart I will I will include DMC. Okay. Yeah. So so you will know, um, you know, in the chart I you know I now of course the chart I will email everybody the section as they go. But once what I can make a commitment to is that people who only want the if they only want the chart then the assumption is they're getting their own floss. And what I will do is I will email those people the list of threads, Cosmo and DMC, so they can get it ahead of time. Okay. How, how does that sound? Sounds great. Okay. Thank you. All right, we can do can that. Can we still get the linen from you? Say that again. Can we get the linen from you? The linen, yes. If you get the kit, the okay. kit will have the linen and the Cosmo floss. Okay. So, and uh, I'm planning on using, it's a, it's a 30 count fabric which might sound scary, but it's 15 stitches the inch. You know, most of you are used to at least 14 stitches the inch with, with Aida. And one of the reasons I like the 30 count is I feel like, I like the coverage. I, I like seeing a little bit of the fabric. I don't, I'm not one of the stitchers and that again, again, that's a whole nother, you know, hot <laughs> right now. There are people that don't want to see any ground cloth, but I, I just, I like, I like the match between two strands of floss and the 15 stitches of the end. So that's, that's what I picked. That'll be a good size for me. Uh, I have one question. Since I'm new, the stuff that, you know, when I was a new stitcher, I liked all these things, all these different patterns. And so I collected a bunch and and even I'll start something and get halfway through and not like it anymore. Well, mm -hmm. Do you all make yourself finish it or do you just say, I can't do this no more? Or do you not do that? <laughs> okay, Lord is what? Okay, I had that problem when I started in May. Okay, I picked stuff that I thought was easy to do and then what happened was, is that I would mess it up. And I was like, I got very dispassionate about it. Mm -hmm. But I won't, at some point I said, okay, you gotta finish something for the end of the year. So I finished four pieces, one little one, 
and the other one say by tens. I mean, we're not talking a big thing, but there was one that I swear I almost set it on fire. God, did I hate that one. Oh God, it was pure confetti. <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> and I'm like, I was this close to finishing and I'm like, I can't take it anymore. I would tell my friends, I, I, have, to, I have to stop it. And finally, to be honest with you, it's not a perfect stitch. I don't care, but it's over. I washed it, I ironed it, and now I don't know what to frame it because I don't want to spend a penny on framing that thing, but it's done. <laughs> so sometimes, you got to know what to, uh, Clarissa Piccolastis always has that. A woman has to learn what to kill and what to let go. And this one, I killed two. And I said, I can't keep on killing them all. Something, you know, now some, there was another project that I loved. So of course that one got done first. But, so, you know, now I have four finishes for the end of the year in six months. I used to do one the whole year. Yeah. And when I, but I was working that and, you know, you have more time, but I mean, I don't, I just, I don't know. I'm not working now, but I don't have six hours a day to stitch. I, I really don't. So well, I, I, I agree with Jane, with uh, Jean, that sometimes we start watching and watching and watching. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm doing it all wrong. You know, why, how come everybody's finishing and I'm not? So we have to work. For me, I have to work on my expectations. Okay, I'm not like other people. It's gonna take me longer. I can't see what I'm doing. I haven't done this in 16 years, you know, and it'll get there. Big, smaller pieces, smaller count, no specialty stitches until you get to that. So right. I have like, what I try to do is I have a challenging piece on my plate and then the easy stuff that I enjoy. And that way I can. Well, I, I think, I, I think that you're you're touching upon two of the things that I think are critical. One one is defining your taste. What what appeals to you, uh, and what what appeals to you in terms of um, something that you want to stitch might be completely different from any of your friends. Um, so that's one thing. Is just I think picking pieces that kind of speak to you. The other thing is picking pieces that are within your ability range. Um, and not, um, you know, al although I'm a proponent of, you know, stretching when, when you're ready to, to, to learn more things, but I think that there, um, you can avoid a lot of frustration in the early part of your stitching if you, um, choose things that are, mm -hmm. um, within your ability. And then the third thing, which um, sadly you don't know about until you get into it, is I've seen some pretty poor charts out there, you know, that are just really, really hard to follow. That, you know, and you've seen these questions, you know, on, in Facebook groups and whatnot, people showing small screenshots of charts and saying, I, I don't know what the designer is asking me to do here. And, um, you know, as a professional who's been in this industry since 1981, that really bothers me. Not to say my, my charts are not perfect and I am constantly trying to improve them, but there are an awful lot of things out there that, um, you know, we don't have industry standards and, um, and it shows sometimes. No. So. Yeah. So at any rate. And, and then the other thank thing, you so much for being here for us. Well, I'm I'm I am, I am here because you are here, and um, I I am um, very pleased and surprised at the at the following that that I've gotten um, just since August when I started, and I'm you know looking forward to next year and keep on keeping on. So yeah, I can't wait. Well, good. All right, well, thank you so much for joining it. me tonight and uh, asking your questions and sharing your stories and, um, you know, give me feedback when you've got time. All right? Will okay. do. Thank you. Let's thank do it again. You. Happy, Happy New Year. You thank too. Thank you. Bye-bye. Merry Bye -bye. Christmas. Zoom gatherings like that one gives us the chance to get together with stitchers from from all over, and I hope that next time that we'll even have a little bit of a worldwide participation. That would certainly um, be a lot of fun. So until next week, stitch happy and stay safe.
I'll see you then.